Hello YouTube and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the map Anorian. It's a great 2v2 match by the way. Trust me on that one. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the bottom left side of the map we have the Isengard player LP Chester. His ally at the top left side is the yellow Rohan player Bival. Their opponent at the top right side is the blue Isengard player Boogeyman and Boogeyman's ally at the bottom right side is the orange Gonzo player Dexter. This is the patch 1.06 and this replay is like 1-2 years old by the way but you know maybe you haven't seen it yet guys. It's one of the best games actually and one of the most fiesta games I was able to watch so far <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy that one trust me. Alright guys, so we have two furnaces into the lumber mill in the back side, then in the front one. Dexter is already pinging his ally and saying build a tower there just for defense. So we have Gondor Isengard on the right side, we have Rohan Isengard on the left side. That's one of the best matchups you can actually get on the map Anorian in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Warchan has been used offensively from the Rohan Isengard team. The Hobbit from both the players will be used defensively just to deal, you know, for a with a defense the tower here and that's one of the better situations for the right side team because this tower here will be protecting this settlement because this settlement will be taking a little bit uh, a little bit time to build and when he builds that when he builds a farm here you can always snipe the farm at zero percent with the tower all right the gonda eisen guard team is doing pretty much the same thing they were also using the war chant offensively but in my opinion, the, uh, you know, the early game should be won by the Rohan Isengard team. Why? Because Rohan, unlike Gondo, can make multiple peasants, which can be used for both defensive purposes, but also offensive purposes. Um, Boogeyman is building two furnaces, two towers to protect this area. And this is a furnace from LP... Uh, this is a lumber mill from LP Chester, by the way. And um, that's the easiest and the best way to deny... When you just need to make sure that they are not walking into the tower, then you should be good to go. And like I said before, Gondo has both his soldiers being used offensively and he's even going inside the base. So LP Chester was building three furnaces, but he was kind of greedy and was not building a tower. For that reason, he will be losing this furnace here to the two soldier battalions. They might even commit, if they want to, to the tower. But that's just too risky because, you know, he has to waste heal for that and he might always cancel that or demolish that tower in time this way the gonzo player won't get any experience won't get any power points he will be used now but that's what i said bival is making enough peasants he's gonna go for a stable after two farms inside only but remember bival was also able to destroy this farm from gonzo and take it for himself also this farm from the gonzo player dexter will be destroyed and his stable will be delayed that's why and it's a smart move from dexter he was building three farms inside. Why? Because that's gonna give you food bonus. Food bonus means for each farm, um, besides one, one doesn't give you any bonuses. You will have to build two up to six. Uh, you can get discount on your Gondonites. And Gondonites are generally more expensive than Rohirrim. That's why you will definitely need the discount. Even with three farms inside, as you can see. Um, he has to invest 640 for a Gondonite Battalion, while the Rohirrim on the other side costs only 420. Alright, the farm here from Dexter will be taken down potentially. And right now, um, Boogeyman has zero Lumber Mills up on the field. But Isengard has also no Lumber Mills, he's gonna build this one now. Um, but unlike his opponent, he has actually four furnaces inside. And Dexter was making the transition after three furnaces into the Uruk Pit. I think uh, the Isengard player Boogeyman, when his ally is Gonzo, will definitely need Lourdes. Why? Because Isengard, Gondor team, they kinda lack of leadership. I mean, this is not terrible either. Because you will also need some pikemen as soon as possible to keep your Lumber Mills alive all the time. But Lourdes is just much more efficient against Rohan because Rohirrim are much much easier to kill for Lourdes than Gondor Knights. So, LP Chester is pinging and I think they're gonna use Warchant here. Maybe Bival is telling him to not use. But the Gondor Knights are coming now from Dexter. So, Ro you know, Rohan is gonna ask for Warchant here. Gondor Knights are gonna get buffed. Even with the buff here, the Ro Rohirrim are already damaged. So, they won't be able to win the 1v1 skirmish. That's gonna be a 50-50 situation. Not really because Gondor Knights are buffed. The money 
is gonna be split in two pieces and Gondor player was able to secure the last hit but he needs a bit more experience to get level 2. Um, the second Gondor Knight is on the field already, he's gonna even go for the third one and that's gonna be pretty much needed because you will need multiple horses to fight for the map control. Ewell on the other side is gonna play the more aggressive playstyle of the Rohan faction. Remember this matchup can be played from Rohan two, in two separate and different ways. The first and uh, the most common way is the sportive Rohan, in which Rohan is making Rohirrim Rohirrim marches to you know, protect his ally, then actually investing his money into, into Theodin and into Aragorn later on for the leadership part. Afterwards you can always purchase the camp in the middle of the map and then mix the two as well just to support your ally. But what he's going for is you want to have strong horses on the field with upgrades and he will be trying to go for a base rush and try to deal as much economical damage as possible and obviously also try to buy some time for his ally who is pretty much behind. By the way, also quite interesting because LP Chester, unlike Boogeyman, went also for Lourdes and Lourdes, I don't like Lourdes in this situation. Lourdes can be useful later on, once he's level 5, but the leadership when you have Rohan as ally is not gonna be needed. Why? Because you will have Theodin, which is gonna give you 50% damage and armor. You will have Aragorn, you will have Stitches, you will have Wells for sustain. Unlike Gonzo, who can't afford uh, the same sport for his ally, unlike Rohan. So Boogeyman is gonna creep, I hope, uh, no, I mean LP Chester is creeping, I hope Boogeyman is not gonna steal the creep with the builder, with the builder here. Or oh, the Gondor Knights were able to secure the last hit, that's quite unfortunate. Also the money, all of the money actually goes to Dexter, that's a great situation. We will have a rush incoming, Warchan has been used on the army here. We have three Rohirrim with uh, heavy armor purchase, no forge please just yet, that's gonna limit their damage, they will need a bit more time now to take down the towers. Pokemon is doing a great job demolishing those towers just in time to deny experience because towers, statues and wells in Battle for Middle Earth 1 they are giving so much experience if you don't demolish them in time. Your opponent will get a lot of power points and your opponent will also be able to level up his units constantly all the time. Okay, so Elvin Wood will be used from Dexter defensively. Elvin Wood in this matchup is a double-edged sword because Elvin Wood can actually help your opponent out once your ally is using rain all your opponent has to do is step on your land leave the land afterwards and you will you will get the leadership back lords from lp chester was able to secure the creep and two parts of the treasure one of them went actually to dexter he's almost level four level five is gonna give you a huge advantage because then you will you will unlock the leadership which is gonna make your units 60 percent stronger if you are not playing Battle for Middle Earth 1 for a long time, or if you haven't played Battle for Middle Earth 1 once yet, and you are here just watching from BFME to Rise of the Witch King, let me tell you that much. In Battle for Middle Earth 1, leadership means everything. And with leadership, you can make one unit as you know so strong that he can deal with 10 units of your opponent. That's why leadership is always something you have to aim for and you have to fight for. Okay, so Armory is up on the field now for LP Chester, but I feel like he has not enough pikemen around. That's why he keeps losing those lumber mills all the time, and lumber mills are the best way to generate money. It's very, very important to build more and more lumber mills all the time if you wanna, you know, and especially because they level up also quite fast. Once they are level 2, you will get more money, they will become harder to take down. Once they are level 3, they will be able to shoot down the enemy units. They will be harder to take down, they will give you more money, more money all the time. So Dex, I mean, um, Boogeyman is, you know, ha having enough pikemen, but that's a smart move from Beewell. He was able to cloak his hobbits here, which is gonna force Boogeyman to use Vision of Palantir, which is on cooldown right now, in order to reveal the hobbit. Loot from LP Chester uh, is in a risky... Oh, one of the Rohirrim has been taken down from Beewell to the pikemen here, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't like the situation here. Loot has zero backup. And once the carnage is off, the Gondor Knights from Dexter can actually chase him down. He has also purchased the Night Shield upgrades, by the way, from the stable level 2. Dexter is pinging his ally, watching everything, saying, use your pikemen to defend, but the Lumber Mill has been already taken down. So we have three Gondor Knights here. And they are all full health, by the way. Heal is available for the worst case scenario. 
and he's going for a rush. LP Chester has only one pikeman, that's not gonna be enough to defend against three Gondor Knights at once. And this attack can actually be very, very devastating. The only good thing is that the army here, the Gondor Knights, are not buffed from the War Chant, so they will take, even with the Nigel upgrade, a lot of damage from these uh, towers in long terms. LP Jester was using the War Chant defensively, that's gonna be enough to force uh, Dexter to retreat, but it's absolutely fine. Because normally, it was a mistake from LP Chester to use the Warchant there. Normally in this matchup you want to make sure that your Warchant is almost and, and always and exclusively available for your ally. Unless you have enough army you want to attack with. Like 4 combos, lures leadership and stuff like this. But for defense you need to make sure to make enough pikemen. Pikemen are a great counter to the, to the Gondor Knights anyway. So you won't need the buff since the Gondor Knights are not going to try to fight you. He will just try to ignore your pikemen and take down your structures. Okay, so um, attacking now is kind of pointless because Warchan is gonna, gonna be on cooldown from LP Chester from the bottom left side, the Isengard player. But from Boogeyman, the blue Isengard player, it's gonna be available. He's being attacked once again, and heavy armor purchase on the pikemen is also kind of not necessary for the same reason, like I said before, because the Rohirrim are not gonna fight your pikemen. So if you want to make them stronger, Forge Blades or the Banner Carry Upgrade is the way to go. I would prefer the Banner Carry Upgrade because levels in Battle for Middle Earth 1 matter a lot as well. Not only that, but with the level 2 they will have this health regeneration available as well. This Rohirrim here will be taken down. That's kinda unfortunate for the Rohan player, Battlewell. Battle well. uh, the short form of that is by the way Bewell. <laughs> Alright, um, Dexter has his land available. And let me check the power points from Beaver. He has also enough power points for the for the Elvin Wood. So he will be able to cover the Elvin Wood from his opponent, Dexter. For the final attack. But Isengard players, both of them are actually quite behind. And they are not ready just yet to go for the attack. But if, you know, if they would be fighting right now, I feel like the fight should be favoring the Rohan Isengard team. Because Rohan can always easily go for Theoden for the leadership part. This Lord from LP Chester is almost level 5 as well. So he will have 60% more damage. And um, because of that, Dexter will be forced to use his Elvin Wood, you know, defensively when he goes for the trample. But remember, b has enough power points now to go for his own Elvin Wood, so he will be able to cover that. So that means the Isengard army from LP Chester will even have more leadership. Boogeyman and also his ally Dexter has to deal with. Um, Money-wise, uh, Dexter is definitely saving for Gunsalf. He has around 4,000 resources collected already. He is like a bit less than half a power point away from unlocking the power points for Gunsalf to buy from the spellbook. And Gunsalf will be needed, but Gunsalf will be also forced to be careful because there is a Lord on the field. Lord is an anti-hero, as we know. He's a gr he's the greatest counter to Gunsalf because he can pin you down. And Gunsalf is a glass cannon hero. So it's, you know, he's all about ditching damage and bursting down the enemy units. But he can't handle that, especially a Isengard army this big with this much leadership can't. And, you know, Gandalf can survive 10 seconds. A Warchant should be used by the, by the time. Boogeyman's Warchant is still on cooldown. And same also for LP Chester. Theodin is coming now finally for this spot. The tower is gonna be taken down. Heal is being used now from uh, Dexter. It looks like the Rohan Isengard team, they don't want to overcome it. That's a perfect situation, but the turnaround is kind of delayed. If you see, I mean, that's also a bad cover from Bewell, by the way. So Bewell should be using the land, you know, further to the side of Isengard, maybe around this area. This way they could just, you know, camp there. And Isengard, Gondor team, they wouldn't be able to protect without trebuchets. And because Gondor is saving for Gunsalf, he was not even building a workshop just yet. There is a builder from LP Chester behind the base, so he's able to see a lot of these structures. He will be also potentially able to see the workshop before it's building up. Um, during all this time, I mean, what's important in this matchup for the Isengard players is keep making army, keep making more and more and more combos. I mean, right now we can agree that Rohan Isengard team, they are definitely ahead. They have to camp in the middle of the map, which is gonna be, right now, impossible to take down for the Isengard and Gondor team of Boogeyman and Dexter. And they won't be able to fight that before Freezing Ring. 
and they are both, both Isengard players are far far away from getting anywhere close to the freezing rain. Alright, so, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of this Pikeman crossbowman combo. The only reason why you would only make them is like you wanna, you, you know, when you are too lazy to make normal Pikeman and micro rounds, because the Pikeman crossbowman combo are weak against normal combos. Why? Because Pikeman in general are weak against archers, so the combos from Boogeyman, they will be easily able to take down the pikes very, very fast. That's why LP Al Chester should just make normal combos, make like two battalions of pikes and put them inside your army. Evil is taking damage here for free. He has, not per he has also purchased the horseman shields actually from the stable level too. Uh, horseman shield, also the Gondonite shield, um, is actually reducing the damage income from the arrows. That's not only, by the way, oh, we have also Gandalf on the field. And I think he's gonna start building now some trebuchets. Gandalf is gonna be just used for, you know, leadership purposes now. Remember, Gandalf gives you 50% increased armor and 200% increased combat experience. That's quite a lot. And the units, uh, after killing some units, will be leveling up like crazy. Level 4 already. Gandalf has to be careful that there is Lurz on the field. He has to avoid fighting. He's gonna get crippled down. He's gonna cancel the creep, cripple. Because cripple in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is one of the two abilities that can actually miss. Like Fireball from Isengard and Lurz's cripple ability can be missed. So sometimes you use Fireball, the Fireball goes off, but it deals zero damage. Same goes to Lurz's cripple. So funny thing is that both the abilities in Battle for Middle Earth 1 that can be missed are both from Isengard. <laughs> so that's a terrible fi fight situation and Gondor Isengard team, they should not take the fight. There is just too much leadership. Lurz is almost level 5. Around this teacher, he will be leveling up quite fast anyway. Aragorn will be the next unit, I think. Evil is gonna save for. He has enough money now. The reason why he is cheaper now is obviously because he has statues. Statues have a hero bonus. And when you have two up to four statues, you can actually get a discount of 30% for your heroes, which is gonna be really, you know, valuable when you wanna recruit those expensive heroes like Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, but also Gandalf. Okay, uh, the transition being finally made into the workshop, and I think trebuchets are gonna be pretty much needed in this situation as well. I feel like Rohan Isengard team, they are playing really, really passive and they don't have to. They have like a bigger army right now, they have more leadership definitely than the opponent team. And every second they are wasting is actually gonna favor the Gondor Isengard team because Gondor player will be just getting more and more trebuchets on the field and trebuchets are the best counter by far against combos. Combos are immobile, they won't be able to dodge the flaming shot. Uh, from the trebuchets of Gonzo. Gondo trebuchets are the strongest trebuchets in the game and they don't care about your leadership, trust me on that one. They will just one-shot your army regardless how much leadership you have. Okay, um, Bewell has to demolish the structures in the middle of the map and if he doesn't, he's gonna give more and more power points. Look how fast they are leveling up, that's what I said before. Stage as wells. It's a perfect situation here for the Gonzo player to fish so many power points. During all this time we have a fight here, there is Saruman on the field who might go for a beautiful fireball play. And also Saruman, nice, not the best fireball actually, I take it back. Now we will see a counter fireball, he's gonna go for a beautiful, but Gandalf is coming, Lord says to cripple him down, oh my god, it's coming. he was covering, but the Visa Plus went off anyway, Gandalf got crippled down, but can he take him down, that's the question. Gandalf is popping off by the way, and I don't know, Fireball will be used, unlike in the movie, this time it works, Saruman from Elpichus is being able to get away. But the Rohan Isengard team, I don't know what they messed up there, but the Gonda Isengard team, they will be able to defend this attack. And I can't tell you whose Tainted Land it is. Boogeyman was using Tainted Land, but also LP Chester was using Tainted Land. Now the Freezing Rain is available for LP Chester, but hear me out, guys. I think it's just pointless now. During all this time, the Gonda player was almost taking down the entire middle. That's why it's so important to always keep some reinforcements in the middle camp. The Isengard player has to make sure to have at least, at bare minimum, one pikeman. The attack continues, Aragorn is level 7 already, we have some level 10 combos, but they are diving in for no reason. Okay, Freezing Rain will be used now, but they just don't have the leadership anymore. Aragorn is very very strong, but all the structures now, and especially Furnaces level 3 are very very tanky, they have 6500 health by the way, one of the most tankiest buildings in the game. There is not a, I think, there is not a single building that is as tanky as a level 3 furnace. 
they are by far the most tankiest buildings in the game. And when we are just focusing on a farm level 3 like this, it has 5,000 health, right? Uh, maybe a blacksmith. Blacksmith has also 6,500 health, if I'm not mistaken, with level 3. Okay, nice defense here. The freezing rain was kind of pointless. I think the attack wouldn't be successful anymore, and LP Chesley had to back up. And these decision makings are obviously, you know, kind of objective, because we are spect spectating the game now, we have no pressure on ourselves, but when you are playing a game like this, you are constantly under pressure, you want to win, you make some mistakes, and these mistakes you make can cost you the game. Rohan is going for another base rush. This time, battle, uh, this time Boogeyman has not enough pikemen around. He has actually zero pikemen around right now. But Boogeyman on the bright side was able to save plenty of combos, so they will be respawning over time. The pressure is real. We have also a Lord who got crippled down. He's gonna be taken down for, for sure. He's level 3 only. This Lord is level 7.5, by the way. The leadership is gonna be unlocked. But in late game, when you have Isengard on both teams, leadership is not gonna be, you know, really impactful it's gonna be more impactful impactful for the rohan isengard team why because they have a middle in the middle they will be respawning the units you lost during the fight as long as you don't lose the entire battalion they will be respawning and the you know units respawning after the rain has been used will receive their leadership once again that's why you are able to see some of those units glowing boogeyman's rain is on cooldown so the plan is simple now actually the isengard rohan team they need to just recover in the middle this time, please make sure to leave one combo in the middle of the map and then push with the entire army forward. And just micro with your combos. When you see one of your combos being low, just send them back to the middle, let them recover over time, and then bring more reinforcements back and forth. This way you can permanently keep up the pressure and it's going to be very, very difficult for the Gondor Isengard team to deal with that. But this time they have trebuchets on the field and it's going to change everything. Like I said before, Firestone upgraded trebuchets are the best when it comes to uh, take down the entire combo army. Gandalf got crippled down actually and it looks like he will be committing to that fight. They don't have the fire zone upgrade purchase yet but that's gonna be changed now. Don't rush to kill Gandalf, I would say kill the trebuchet first. Tainted Line will be used, Elvin Wood is being used from the Gonzo player, will be used now from B-Wall. Um, Tainted Line will be used also from Boogeyman. This is the land now once again from the Isengard Gondor team, but Gandalf has been taken down already. Because of the land, I mean, land works like a, like a rain. Uh, on your land, your opponent will have zero leadership. That's why it's so important to leave the lane from your opponent and to not fight on it. Because your units will be much, much weaker this way. Okay. Um, we are gonna get some more trebuchets on the field potentially. There is not much happening outside of the side around this area and uh, boogeyman has you know even though he keeps losing this units all the time and he has like zero lumber mills up on the field by the way but he has industry he has all the level 3 furnaces especially with the industry buff he's gonna get so much money uh, he's not reviving saruman just yet he has the money collected by the way i think saruman is a way to go because normally the gondo uh, the rohan isengard team they will try to cripple down the ganza from dexter and, you know, Lourdes can cripple only one hero. And when he, you know, uses the cripple on Gandalf, then your Saruman can be shining bright like a diamond. He can dive in, use the Warm Tongue ability, take down, take the control of the entire enemy team, and then win the fight. Both, he, both wizards of Battle for Middle Earth 1, Gandalf and Saruman, are able to change the outcome of the game, to change, uh, to change the outcome of the fight, boys. Okay, Saruman is gonna use Warm Tongue uh, on one trebuchet only. We have Eagles being summoned here. They're gonna try to take down Saruman and they will be able to take down the Saruman just in time. One of the Eagles is gonna be taken down. Uh, the other one is gonna go down as well. I mean, two Eagles summon like for one Saruman is just really necessary. I think it's okay because obviously Dexter is gonna try to get Army of the Dead in this situation. Dexter has already collected 6 power points after the Eagles, so he's 4 power points away only from getting the Army of the Dead, which can definitely win the game for you. On the other side, Bivol is 1 power point away from potential ends, and if he goes for the ends, he's like 11 power points away from getting Army of the Dead. Rebuchets from Dexter are doing a great job in this situation, by the way. But that's a bad fight for um, Boogeyman to take. Again, you don't want to fight here. Lourdes has been crippled down from Boogeyman and will be taken down. And I think it's a mistake 
Eagle will be used as a nice heal, but the Eagle won't survive a second. Plus 500 from killing an Eagle just because of the pillage ability oh, of Lourdes. I didn't see that before. Plus 500 from killing one Eagle. That's quite a lot of cash. Okay, now b -Wall has enough power points to go for the Ants or for the Cloud Break. I think, I think Ants are the way to go. This way you can actually open a different possibility for your ally. You can use the Ants. He has even vision around this side because of the build of his ally. So if he uses ends here and breaks like two, three walls, um, Gondor has to make sure to keep some trebuchets inside his space. And Gondor's economy is also not looking that great. I actually take it back. He has four farms and Boogeyman has like zero Lambert Mills around. Zero. And uh, Ants allies will be picked. I can't even talk, guys. Sorry. Ants will be used immediately. And the Gondor Isengard team, they need to defend this because Rohan Isengard... They will enter the base, and if they do that, they will be definitely taking down everything. On the right side, Gondo is like 4 power points away from getting the Army of the Dead. LP Chest is 4 power points away from getting the Balrog Summon. And Boogeyman is 7 power points away from getting the Balrog Summon. Balrog can actually, you know, win the game, because Balrog all alone is enough to take down the entire castle of Gondor or of Rohan. Oh, oh, that's the fiesta, by the way, guys, because Rohan is not paying attention here. And trust me on that one. Look how much power points Gondor player is able to get from killing the structures here. He's fishing so many power points, so many power points, so many power points. And Rohan is diving in. Glorious charge is being used, but Gondor is so close for Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead will be unlocked and immediately used for defensive purposes. What a nice timing. The perfect timing, by the way, guys. Now Rohan and Isengard team, they will lose everything what they had on the field. Like, I mean literally everything what they had on the field. Aragorn is almost level 8. Aragorn is one of the two heroes that can fight against Army of the Dead. We have even some explosive mines around, I think. Coming from the Siege Works level 3, Saruman is back in the business. He's gonna make even more explosive mines. Which is kinda a waste of money in this situation. The middle camp, ha the middle camp has been taken down. Cloudbreak is being used from... Uh, Dexter, by the way, guys. Uh, Cloudbreak is not affecting heroes. Um, that's why Aragorn is not losing any health. Gandalf has to retreat. Gandalf, you know, Aragorn is one-man army, we know that. Look how hard he's hitting like an absolute truck in this situation. He got crippled down. That's gonna disable him. And I think in this situation, um, the Gonzo player has to make sure to leave the kill to Isengard. Why? I mean, maybe you can leave it also to Gandalf. This way you can hope that he gets level 10. But why it's so important to leave, to leave it to Isengard is simple. Because you want Isengard to get Balrog as well. And killing Aragorn is going to give you a lot of power points. But unfortunately, Gonzo player was securing the last hit. This way Gandalf is almost level 9. Because, you know, when you have your army of the dead as Gonzo, you don't really need to kill the heroes anymore. Okay, there was an interesting fireball. Wormtongue is going to be used. He was able to take the control of one of these crossbow men. Saruman got crippled down and will be taken down. Uh, LP Chester has now enough power points for Balrog. But he has no vision control. He has actually vision of Palantir already, which can be used. But I think uh, Dexter can just buy the middle camp in this situation. It's pretty easy. Okay, Balrog summon will be used. Let's see if LP Chester... Um, normally, you should be easily able to take down the entire, you know, entire castle with a Balrog summon. All you need to do is kill the Tita, like he did with the Ignite. Move a little bit, use breath fire, this way you can actually kill 5 structures. That's a perfect situation here. This way you can make sure easily, like, you will still have time afterwards, trust me on that one, that you can kill the entire base of the Gondor faction. That's why Balrog is a game-winning ability. Uh, that's, oh, what happened here with the explosive mine? I think Dexter lost, like, a lot of his Gondor Knights. He has still so many of them alive. Gandalf is level 9. Evil's money is not looking great. He won't be able to revive his Aragorn, who costs 2,600 resources, by the way. He has to make more Ro Rohirrim with the Glorious Charge. Uh, Eagles are going to be ready for the next fight as well. AOD is looting. He has 7 power points collected for Beevil. He is 3 power points away from getting his army of the dead. And the Balrog from LP Chester was able to destroy the Gondor Castle from Dexter. But Dexter didn't get defeated, why? Right? Because he was purchasing the middle camp. Okay. Um, Rain is gonna be on cooldown from Boogie and also on cooldown from LP Chester. Gandalf got crippled down. Yeah, Theoden is level 4, level 5 actually. Glorious Charge is available, but yes, now finally some Rohirrim on the field. They don't even have... they have. They're gonna go for a... 
for a hero move now. Lourdes is gonna be taken down by the Eagles. Trample is incoming. We gotta focus on the power points from Bivo. He was not able to kill anything. That was a nice and beautiful Wizard Blast, by the way. They are getting knocked down. They are not dying, but disabling them might save you. You know, might save a lot of units from his ally. Bivo is a little bit more than one power point away from getting Army of the Dead unlocked. Lourdes from Boogeyman has to be careful. The middle is under control, control from the Gonda Isengard team. Uh, we have still four farms up on the field and three of them are level 3 by the way guys from um, Dexter. So Dexter has still a great resource income. Look his money. He will be soon able to buy the base again. Boogeyman on the other side is still two and a half power points away from getting his Balrog unlocked from the spellbook. Again, that's gonna be more than enough to finish off the base of the Rohan. All alone, we don't need anything else for that. Gunsalf is one level away from getting level 10, that's gonna unlock the Ward of Power, which can literally take down the entire army of Isengard and even take down the army of the dead from the Rohan player later on. Bivol has to make sure to get the power points very fast, but the problem is Dexter now has also his army of the dead almost back up, which can literally end the game. LP Chester has to make sure to stop with the mine summon here. Because the mines were not doing anything. Like in this, you know, cancel it, uh, you know, demolish that and make a second Uruk pit if you still want to make more units. If you have enough money to do that, just make double Uruk pit. Just make as many combos as fast as possible because you will keep losing units. You will have to bring units back on the field really, really fast in order to keep yourself and your ally in the game. The explosive mines, look at that. They are doing absolutely nothing. They are drawing for one second the attention of the. Rohan Isengard team. Okay, uh, now we have Army of the Dead summoned here from the Gonzo player Dexter once again. They are fully committing and that might be enough to win the game now. Uh, Rohan is waiting for an opportunity. There is no reason of committing now because Army of the Dead, they don't take damage, they can't get trampled down. Only magic damage is able to, you know, harm them and take them down. Aldrok is able to take them down. Um, Gunsalf, Saruman and Aragorn, that's all. Like, nothing else can hurt them. Alrighty, so uh, Theodine is back in the business. Glory's charge is available. The last glory of Rohan. Ends will be summoned here for a trample. Cloudbreak is coming in clutch from the Gonzo player, which is gonna reduce the armor and movement speed of his opponent's unit. That's why Cloudbreak is so good in Rohan mirrors or Gonzo mirrors when you wanna chase down the enemy uh, horses in late game. You can slow them down with the Cloudbreak. Glorious Charge, he's gonna go in for a dive, one power point away, but he's getting more and more power points during this fight. Gandalf has to be careful, he's almost level 10. Wizard Blast will be used here. He's actually dodging quite nicely, we have some trebuchets, the base from LP Chester is almost gone, but Evil was able to collect the power points he needed. Army of the Dead will be summoned, but the Ward of Power was not able to take down every unit from the Army of the Dead. And this is gonna be still enough to defend. The base is including one damage tower, one full tower, one level 3 furnace, and uh, Citadel building up at 50%, guys. The army of the dead, not many of them are remaining. I don't know. Gondor player was able to buy the base, but again, the Balrog from LP Chester is gonna be able to finish off, and Dexter had to kinda invest, or waste in this case, 5,000 resources. And he has enough time, doesn't he? He might be even able to take down the middle camp here. Because all he needs to do is kill... Aragorn is also here from b -Wall. He's almost level 9 with the help of Aragorn. And use one breath fire. All you need to do is kill the Citadel. And that might be it. That might do the magic trick. He needs to use the breath fire now. It's loading for the next 3 seconds. It's gonna be available now. Cita is down. That means he won't be able to build any of these structures. But we have Balrog summon also from Boogeyman destroying the Rohan base, guys. Destroying the Rohan base. Aragorn. Oh, that's a mistake from Gondor. Oh, you can fight against Aragorn in a melee fight. Aragorn gets level 10, uses the army of the dead during all this time. Balrog from the Rohan player, I mean from the Isengard player, Boogeyman. Eagles are coming. Can they finish off the game? That's the question. Dexter has been defeated. And b has been defeated at the same time. Now it's Isengard against Isengard. But there is no way LP Chester can win this one. Because Dexter 
was able to destroy so many furnaces. He has only one furnace level 3 left. Urukpit is level 1, so the production building, production speed of this is gonna be very low. And all he needs to do now is commit to that fight. I mean, you know, if you wanna make sure that you win this game regardless, you can always make some Berserkers, make sure to take down every single mill from your opponent, take all the mills around your side, because let's be honest, Boogeyman is playing now without any mills for a very, very long time. But because of the level 3 furnaces, because of the help of industry, he was able to keep himself alive. The vestation was used from LP chest as well to get some money, but the problem is he has no time anymore to build more and more units. We have a level 8 combo with Lourdes leadership inside the base of the Isengard's player LP Chester. What an incredible game, guys. And if you enjoyed this one, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Likes are helping out for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are not done yet. Maybe we're gonna see some shenanigans. And maybe LP Chest is gonna still win the game. But like a miracle has to happen in this situation that Boogeyman is gonna lose. Because the Balrog from LP Chester is gonna be still on, on a very long cooldown. And he's losing the base. What a fiesta game. Great matchup on Anori and Gondor, Gondor Isengard against Rohan Isengard. I mean, how many times do we see that two people are being defeated at the same time? And then I give credits to, to Dexter. He was kind of carrying the game to the, to the very last second. Buying so much time. The attack in the middle that destroyed plenty of statues, wells, towers that gave him enough power points for army up to death was the game changing moment. Because trust me on that one, if Dexter wouldn't get the power points he needed, he would never be able to defend this attack inside his base. Game is over, Gondor Isengard team will be able to win this one. Guys, thank you so much for watching, I see you next time, take care of yourself, have a fantastic week and see you soon. Peace guys.